This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and it is time for the Intentionality Gurus with Candace Pollock. And today's topic is being blind to automatic assumptions. Yeah. When you hear that, what, what occurs to you? Um, well, I know I've been an assumption person my whole life, okay? I always assume before I get the facts. Um, and, um, but I think sometimes we sort of bury them and decide not to think about what we've just assumed. Am I on the right track? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. It drives, it, it drives a lot of our, our, our thinking and our behaviors, like a, a vicious cycle uh, in terms of our assumptions drive our experience, our experience drives our assumptions, and they most of the time they go totally unnoticed. Okay. All right, so we had just a brief conversation before um, we went on air. Um, in that brief conversation, can you think of any assumptions you made or didn't make? Um, well, uh, as I was talking about my fiasco in Michigan, um, I, I made an assumption that um, my husband had taken care of some things before we left town um, because he's usually very accurate about that. Um, and then when I realized he didn't, um, my brain initially went to frustration, anxiety, and some anger, but I caught it before um, you know, I went off the rails. <laughs> good, good for that last part there. Yeah, no, ex the oh, exactly. Because in the past, that's what I would have done. And I know it, I just wouldn't have thought about what I was saying. I would have just, um, I'd be judging myself. I'd be judging him. Uh, and there would be an argument and then having to say, I'm sorry. But this time it was like, Okay, that's all going on in here, uh, but I don't need all this commotion. And I so, slowly let it go away. Yeah, so so the definition of assumptions is um, a thing that is accepted as true or as certain to happen without proof or the action of taking on the power of responsibility. So there's we can assume responsibility for something. And that kind of gets overlooked. So in what context might that definition apply to that scenario? Um, well, the assumption that uh, my husband would have done something uh, that to me was necessary. And he just didn't see it. He didn't see it or he... he I, at, fir it. at first, I don't think he... I don't think he realized what he what he had to do. And the reason why he had to do it <clears throat> is because um, that's one of the few household chores that he takes care of. And that's the finances. Not that I don't know them, <clears throat> but I allow him to do it because he's he's better at math than I am. Okay. So there's a lot of potential for assumptions there. And I'm, and I'm you know, you're not alone in that when I started paying attention to this. So this was actually, um, the, the topic was actually inspired by a Ryan Holiday's um, Daily Stoic newsletter. He's a um, guy that has this newsletter and he anchors everything to um, the original Stoics, you know, philosophers. Um, and so I think the name of it was Don't Assume, something like that. And um, so it really got me thinking about Gee, you know, I, I never even thought about making assumptions. You know, it's just this thing we automatically do, and it is a human tendency. Um, so um, it can be a presumption, which means we're anticipating a, a particular outcome, or it can be an assumption. And the idea is just like any fork in the road um, opportunity to just notice when these things pop up. 
So um, they operate so automatically that we don't have a reliable way to notice them. And in fact, um, it's really hard sometimes to pick up on how they drive a lot of our thinking and our behaviors and our actions, you know, which is all, you know, what we're um, focusing on with the intentionality gurus about how all of these things tend to drive our lives and we're just along for the ride, <laughs> yeah. right? Right. You know, for better or for worse. <laughs> Well, so what's occurring to you? I can see that you have a thought. Well, the, up. so um, this weekend I put out a post um, that I was <clears throat> taking a, a new path, not mm -hmm. getting rid of what I have in my path, but taking a new path. And um, I was ready for, I, I pre-assumed that I was going to get some flack for it, um, which I did. Um, and from two people who I really thought were in my corner. Um, and one wrote me a, a very long, long email. Um, I had to stop in the middle of it because it was really upsetting to me. Um, but once I got through it, and then I heard from this other person, um, all these negativities of, you know, why I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Um, I just thought about it for a while. And I actually went outside and did some um, weeding of a plant that I have out there that has been looking really sickly lately. And that helped. It like cleaned out my brain. And it was like, you know what? You don't have to like what I'm doing. That's okay. But I'm still going to do it. And so they had an assumption. Right. What, what do you think the assumption was? Um, that I was going to do too much, that I wasn't ready for this, that it was just something that I just like threw out to the gods. Um, and to one person, I actually picked up the phone and called them. And I said, if you think that's what happened, because that's what was implied by her. Um, I said, I've been thinking about this for a little over two years. And it finally was, what am I going to do about it? Am I, am I going to think about it for another 10 years and then be sorry I didn't try? Yeah, my observation has been you've been spiraling up to that evolving and, and doing self-exploration and so on, and then having it manifest itself um, to want to share it in other ways in, in your own daily Exactly. Activity. And I've realized that my relationships with my husband and my son have changed so much because of all the learning that I've been having and plan to continue to take. Um, I just thought this is the right time and there's that fork in the road, but I can still drag some of this other stuff with me because I enjoy that as well. So it's not like I'm, you know, abandoning everything that is important to me, but I'm adding yeah, one more thing. Tracks, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, I think there's another assumption there, um, not necessarily on your part. Well, maybe, I, you know, we could explore that, but um, on their part that they have standing to, you know, um, chime in and maybe they had your best interests at heart, but maybe they didn't. And that's the whole point. You know, where's where are the assumptions? Where might there be an assumption? Um, I had a really good friend who's deceased, uh, but he prior to that, he came from a um, ethnic family that was very enmeshed and they um they wanted him to marry his girlfriend and the whole family was really haranguing him about the need to do this he was divorced and had kids and he'd been dating this woman for a, quite some time and he was sharing with me we we were uh, buddied up together in a coaching program and he was sharing with me the pressure and you know he was really angsting about it and he was talking about the pressure he was getting from the family. And this is a guy who was in his 40s at the time. And I said, um, what, are you um, living by committee? Like, am I, can I be on the committee? Do I yeah. pick, you know, <laughs> step up and, and chime in and so on? And of course, you know, that would have been totally inappropriate of me. I could, you know, give him some input maybe as a friend, but I would have to ask for permission first. But, you know, his family doesn't think twice about chiming or didn't think twice about um, chiming in and telling him what to do. 
So the assumption is on his part that that was okay for a you know early 40s guy who had been out on his own and so on. And it was an assumption on their part that um, it was permitted. It was appropriate. This is what families do. I don't know. What are your thoughts about that? Um, so I grew up um, with parents who, I'm not going to say they told us what to do, but they made suggestions on what they thought was best for us to do. Um, and with my father, I heard them as suggestions. With my mother, I heard them as, this is what you have to do. Um, but I think as family, sometimes we get too comfortable in our roles. You know, well, I'm the parent, you're the child. Mm -hmm. um, and that child can be 40 or 60. It doesn't yeah, make any those difference. Those little tentacles go deep. Right. Uh -huh. So I started to learn probably much later in my relationship with my mother that, yes, you know, she could tell me I really should cut my hair because women my age should have short hair. Um, and it'd be like, well, I guess I should do it because mama said so. But then when I finally realized, hey, I'm, I'm an adult, Mama can suggest, but she can't necessarily tell me what to do. Yeah, and I had an experience with my mother. She was moving from the house we had lived in um, when I was growing up in New York and moving to a condo in the little hamlet nearby. And, um, you know, it was an emotional day. I uh, flew back to New York to kind of help out and be moral support and so on. And the movers were packing things and um, moving them out. And I was taking some of the more delicate things. And it was an incredibly hot August day and, and reasonably humid uh, for New York. And I was, you know, in, in kind of workout clothes, nothing, you know, fancy. And um, I found out from one of my sisters afterwards, my mother um, said something to the effect of, um, I wish Candy would wear more blusher. Like, Mom, you know, if she had said it to me, I don't know where that conversation would have ended up because, you know, at that time I had a little bit of a hair trigger um, uh, response, not not blowing up, but just that, you know, she was um, kibitzing on things that like, yeah. really on the hot day like this, you're going to talk about blush <laughs> and um, insane. So, you know, the assumption there I had was that she couldn't chime in with anything she had no right and that that was to me a violation um I won't tell you how old I was but I was a, a quite mature adult and or maybe not so mature and um but you know looking back over it I recognize um she had the assumption that you know she could just chime in on anything and I suppose she can and then my assumption was anything she chimed in on was a violation and and how does that serve, you know, when, when you think about your own life, how, how do those assumptions serve you? Well, and they don't. And um, as I've repeated numerous times, I thought my mother and I had this love-hate relationship. So uh, every week when we talked, um, I felt like everything that she said was negative towards me. Um, I remember one conversation that we had repeatedly, um, and it was about Alex. So my mom was one of the few people that I wanted to go to if I was having um, some issues. And one day I remember going to her and saying, I'm really worried. He's struggling in college. Um, if he doesn't get his grades up. He's not going to be able to continue. And I just was rambling. And I remember my mother saying, well, if you were a good mother, and I don't remember what she said after that. And I took it as a negative, which at that time, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. However, when she got ill and for the first couple of weeks, she was still cognitive enough for us to have a conversation. I asked her, do you remember the situation? She didn't re remember it 100%, but she remembered it enough. And she said, 
That's not what I really meant, Karen. What I meant was as a good mother, and I thought, yeah, she does get her words mixed up even way before this, you know, her stroke. So I think the bottom line is, is that, you know, as adults, definitely we don't want people to tell us what to do, even if it's our mother. Um, and I think sometimes we just, you know, build up this barrier. Hey, who are you to tell me how to live my life? <laughs> exactly. A, a form of protection and so on. So the idea is just to be able to catch ourselves in the act of when and how assumptions might be filtering our experience. You know, they shouldn't be telling me what to do. Um, you know, I had my issues with a older sister who would tell me how much butter to put on my toast. I always used that. And I would always say, <laughs> who died and made you God? You know, quite mature. But, you know, I rankled at that kind of intrusion because, you know, it, it was a boundaries issue. I, I didn't recognize it at the time as a boundaries issue. I was too young. I don't think I had heard of the word or the concept. But, you know, looking back on it, I recognized, you know, we, we, I don't, I think I was perfect and I was never doing that to anyone else, but right. um, I always felt that it was happening to me. And of course, you know, I, I mean that facetiously. So the idea is to know one that assumptions are so prevalent. We're not even paying attention. We just assume like breathing. It's an autonomic uh, process. And two, um, you know, we previously talked about confirmation bias, meaning that um, there's three kinds like, um, we'll search for evidence to support what we think, you know, what our belief is, and we'll kind of discount anything that might be to the contrary. And the interpretation is when we receive the evidence, um, if it isn't consistent with our belief system, we'll we'll doubt it. We won't accept it as valid. And then finally, the way we, um, what they call selective recall, we have a tendency to recall the information that's favorable to our assumptions and not remember the stuff that's uh, not favorable to assumptions or our beliefs. Um, so where does that, um, what, what does that trigger in your thinking? Well, it triggers, as you were talking about it, that um, we almost wear this sort of armor around ourselves that says, you know, I'm not going to be hit by the things that I choose not to um not that I don't want to hear, that I don't want to deal with. Mm -hmm. But I'll I'll accept this other stuff. I'll let it penetrate through my metal shield because, hey, you know, that I either understand. And I think that's what it boils down to more is that there's some information that you automatically connect to that, hey, I really understand this. But this other stuff over here, um, boy, I have to take time to, think about it and research it. And I just don't want to do that. So I'm going to throw that away and keep this, even though this may not be correct. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, particularly with our politicized, you know, the, the division in the country and, you know, all sorts of extremes of, you know, your religion or politics or, I don't know, all sorts of things. Um, we, we don't tend to ask ourselves, you know, is it true? You know, they're my position versus their position. Is it even an, um, yes or a no, a binary question? And maybe there's a, a third or 10 alternative approaches to it. Do we even take the time to explore that? And then, um, the question I really love to, um, ask, you know, myself is what if it weren't true? You know, what, what, what would open up? Um, so using the um, issue uh, that you were describing in the beginning with um, your um, husband, um, what if it weren't true that um, he had to do X? Um, if it weren't true, then I would have to figure out um, who was responsible, which may have been me. Um, in this case, it would have been. Um, And when you see the truth in it, um, you know, sometimes we leave ourselves vulnerable for making a mistake. 
Yeah, but there's another assumption there. So the assumption is that if he doesn't do it, you have to. But what's the third alternative? What oh. what if that weren't the case? Well, asking him to take care of it. Or having some kind of automatic system so that, you know, one of the assumptions was that you needed to check up to make sure he did it. So maybe there's a way to automatically, you know, have a prompt, you know, via your phone or your calendar, or, you know, there's um, different um, task management right. apps and so on, many of them free, where it can be an automatic process so that you unload it from your own shoulders and brain and responsibility. And if, if somebody falters in following it, then they are responsible. For right. I, you know, as I look back at what happened last week, 99.9% um, .9 of the time when we are home, working from the home, um, that's not even something that I would even have to ask him. He <laughs> didn't have his computer with him. Okay, where he gets all of, even though he gets messages on his phone, he has more alerts that um, come through his email. And when he's out of town, he chooses to pick and choose which emails he reads because he's really busy on a project um, and not making excuses for him. That's, that's why I brought up the subject because it was like, you've been working, you know, 10, 12 hours a day, you left your computer at home on purpose, but what else, what are you missing that you normally would do? Mm -hmm. um, and once we figured out that that was one of them, um, you know, all of a sudden he became very um, sensitive to the fact that, you know, am I dropping the ball somewhere else? Mm -hmm. And I finally said to him, look, I've got my computer, uh, use it you know, go check your email, uh, do whatever you have to do. And that to him was a relief because all he thought about as we prepared to go on Monday was I have four days that I am going to be slammed with work. Right, so, right, right. yeah, so th I think that's where my, you know, where my thinking was that morning when I just said, oh, by the way, did you? And then we both thought it was going to be a simple action. You know, both banks in the same area, they weren't. Um, so again, we both assumed something that, you know, uh, wasn't going to happen. Yeah, and we can never totally eradicate all of them and so on, but it's just a game to be able to play with ourselves. You know, how much of my daily activity is based on an assumption, a should or a should not, and um and I explore it and just decide whether that's the right fork in the road for me at this time or ever, um, and so on. So just delving into it and noticing it. Wow. And you know what they say about assuming things. So we won't even go there today because, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm, you know, it's funny as we're talking about this, I'm looking out my window, uh, the skies are blue. I know it's cold outside. But I had just looked at my weather app, which actually says it's cloudy and windy. <laughs> so before I went on, I assumed it was going to be a, you know, ugly morning. And yet, now they look out the window, it's a beautiful morning. So, uh, hey, uh, don't let those assumptions uh, upset you, I guess is just, just my notice, final Then you can make a choice. Absolutely. Well, again, thank you for uh, a lively intentionality gurus, and we will be back in two weeks. Have a great day. You too. Thank you, Karen.